So Rupert, I mean, the twists and turns are nonstop. So when you first read the script, was this an easy yes? I assume it was like, oh yeah, please. No, it was a very, very hard no. It was a very much no, I have no interest in this kind of world of entitlement and privilege and, or even politics really. Um, especially not a politician who does what this guy is accused of doing. So it was, it wasn't an easy yes at all, but the, okay. the caliber of my colleagues and the director SJ Clarkson, and indeed the writing was great. So it, it was in the end, it became a no brainer. Yeah, because because what's great about this is they're all complex characters. That's why I, I would have thought as an actor, this would be something you'd want to get your teeth into. Although it's disturbing issues, the actual every single character in this has something else going on and you're always trying to read what is happening here. So is that something maybe for you, Sienna, that you went, OK, this is complicated, but it's something I'd like to get my, my teeth into? Yeah, I think you're, you're dealing with people. It, it's really complicated, like you said. You know, I think that in spite of what we learn about James Whitehouse and Sophie, in a way you're kind of rooting for that marriage. It's not, it's not easy. It's just not, none of it's easy. And it sits in the awkward space of, of conflict. And I think that that as an actor is what I always like to look for. And that yeah. was, it was full of that. And, and did, like, did you do anything to get into the headspace of this character then Rupert? Because as we said, he's a despicable character. So what do you do to get into that mind space to portray him? Because I mean, he's not a particularly nice person. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's true. I um, It's a good question. And I don't necessarily know the answer. I, th I suppose I did exactly what I wanted for a while and saw what that felt like. And luckily, what I want to do isn't illegal. <laughs> that always helps, doesn't it? Um, Sienna, I mean, there, there is parallels with you. You were so fam famous, very young, right? And the paparazzi obviously hounded you. So w was that something that helped you inform how you play this character that you had, I suppose, some reference point uh, to, the, to that in real life? I'd say that I was probably an expert on certain aspects of that feeling. Yes, it was. It, I grew up from a very early age having to navigate that. And Sophie is catapulted into a spotlight that is deeply uncomfortable and that I have sense memory around. So that part of it was was interesting to revisit from a different perspective and, and from, an, from an actor's perspective, also responding very differently as a character to perhaps myself in those environments. Um, in a way, it felt like reclaiming a narrative. I was interested to get back into that space as somebody else um, for whatever reason some psychoanalyst will, will find. It's probably not particularly healthy. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But I, yeah, I understand that world and Rupert does too. And, and of course it's not particularly comfortable to, to be back in that scrutiny, but then it's lovely when it's cut and you can laugh with the people playing the paparazzi and yeah. it, it kind of recalibrates the memory. Yeah, and it sounds like Rupert paused to, before he took, took that role. Did you take pause at all, um, Sienna, before you took the role? As in, was it too close to the bone at all? You know, I thought about it. I definitely asked a few questions, but the caliber of people, like Rupert said, was so high and I got sent these six scripts and, David E. Kelly and Melissa James Gibson's names were on them. And, and I love those six part dramas. I love The Undoing. I love Big Little Lies. I, I, I was very excited to, to make something that people want to watch having spent most of my career in independent cinema, which seven people see and I'm proud of, but it's quite <laughs> nice to be in something that people actually want to watch. And um, I also was ready to come back to England and be around my family and play somebody English, which I realized I very, very rarely do. It, yeah. was, it was much more of a character than I'd anticipated, I thought. I thought I might be able to kind of just like arrive and do it. And I realized that she's so different. She's got that real contained stoic British thing that I'd never really mastered. Um, mm. It was complicated, but I'd also wanted to work with SJ Clarkson, our director for a long, long time. And yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's a brilliant job that she does. I mean, it's beautiful to watch as well. The transitions in this, even scene to scene and the endings are like you're stepping sometimes from a scene from the past. It's a flashback into a current scene, like in a courtroom. I loved the, those transitions. Were they hard to film at all, Rupert, in the sense that you're obviously ending somewhere and appearing somewhere else? Was there continuity just had to be thought about a little bit, I assume? Yeah, because obviously when you film, you tend to film all the scenes that are in one location at the same time. So all the lift scenes or all the corridor outside the lift scenes. So we would, you know, constantly having to remember whose version of events is this? Is this, you know, Olivia's version or James's version? And, and or then there's the kind of surreal thing of Sophie suddenly there. And so that, that was sort of dream world. So SJ had to keep us all very honest on that one. OK. And, and for you, Sienna, was the role draining at all? I was wondering, because everybody, as I said, is a complex character. Mir is probably one of the most complex in it. Um, in the opener scene, even from the op opening of the whole thing, the, that scene where she first finds out about the affair and everything at home, 
was that is that hard? I was talking about head spaces with uh, Rupert a second ago. Is that hard to just continuously do for a shoot? Do you know what I mean? Because there's not really a scene where you're not having something to deal with. You know, the knocks keep coming for that character and it's hard to do that. It's an ugly space to sit in and it's painful. And of course, everybody in, in all of our jobs, you, you have memories and you, you draw on those things, but there's also catharsis in going there. There were definitely moments where I felt extremely drained and, and sad and Rupert's an incredible scene partner. And we, we would sit in the intensity that we needed to sit in. Um, but then we became such good friends that we definitely had laughs as well. And SJ has managed to keep the levity on set really afloat because we needed that. The, you know, it's shock after shock after shock yeah. for my character. And I did go home exhausted, but I knew that that was probably conducive to, to giving that performance, you know, yeah. or playing that woman. You know, she needs to be slightly damaged and broken. And and Rupert, did you guys ha- get to like do a lot of rehearsal time? Sometimes on these projects, you hear it's very quick. So did you get that time to, because as much as this is a complicated problems in the, in the marriage, we have to believe that it was a loving marriage before the situation. So did you get to do a lot of rehearsal at all? Yeah, SJ was really great on that, brought in a movement coach. And because these kids as well had to behave as if they were siblings and also as if we'd, They'd been around us for their whole lives. So we we as a family kind of goofed around for a good amount of time. In fact, the flashback scenes, I think we shot first, didn't we? We did. So Happiness. sort of messing around in the seaside and running on the hills and throwing them in the water and all that. By the end of that, they they felt like they didn't, they completely kind of trusted us. And that was really important. SJ did this amazing thing. Actually, we, she made us study each other's hands. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. And hold hands, which is a strange thing when you don't know anyone particularly well. But obviously, if you've been in a marriage since you're university, holding hands, you're yeah. holding hands. And there's a way that you do that. And you know somebody's shape of their hand. And mm, yeah. that was quite a very, it was a good way of breaking down the barriers to get to some sort of familiar intimacy that, of course, they would have. Yeah. And of course, you mentioned S.J. Clarkson, the, the director. Do you think this would have been a completely different project if a man had directed it? Do you think a man could have directed this show? It made sense for a woman to direct it, I think, because it really sits in that female perspective a lot of the time. Um, but there are many capable men. I, I hope that we get to a point where the gender of a director is just not even a conversation, but it is an exciting moment in cinema and certainly new. In the last four years, I've worked with about five female directors, having only worked with two throughout the rest of my career so the world is shifting and and she had she's such a great director she really has such a clear vision and a style and London looks like a kind of James Bond film and we were really lucky that her vision elevated this to the pace that it did on that note guys congratulations thanks a million for talking to me thank Thank you. you cheers